Hi everybody, it's Matthew here from Bead Spider, and today I'm going to be showing you lots of fantastic things. I've got our herringbone beautiful labyrinth necklace and bracelet jewelry to show you today. Um, it's something that is brand new. The, the labyrinth necklace is completely new as of today. It's literally only just come out. Um, I'm really excited about it. This is a design I've had in the works for quite some time now and it's finally coming to fruition today and I'm glad you're all here to enjoy it. I see that we've got uh, a few people already on who've uh, jumped on to say hello. Dana's here as well. Uh, we've got Evelyn as always nice and early joined in. Um, Oliyumi is here as well. Lots and lots of people joining in. Doris too. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> uh, Sue's just popped on as well. Um, pop in if you're here, if you're watching, do please comment and say hello and I'll, you know, give you a little shout out. Um, as I've said, we've got the brand new design today. I'm going to show you three different ways of doing sort of that labyrinth flat herringbone stitch. Um, I know it looks absolutely gorgeous. Um, <clears throat> Shirley's here. She says she's looking forward to it. Uh, you know what, Shirley? I'm looking forward to it too. There's a lot of time and effort gone into this uh, design, as I said, and <clears throat> the uh, the pattern is available if you want to get the pattern. It's on the Bead Spider website, so if you click the little link in the description, it will take you to the place where you can find the uh, the bracelet kits, the necklace kits, the patterns are there as well if you just want the pattern. Um, but we do also have some specials going on at the moment. So if you buy any two necklaces, you get a nice little discount, uh, which works out uh, a bit over 10%, I think, which is pretty good for a first day uh, little sale that we're doing. Um, any two necklace kits for £32. Uh, we've also got the bracelet kits on sale as well, which they come in a bundle of any three, again, with a very, very similar discount or you can get the matching set if you want uh, for a little discount as well. So the matching necklace and the matching bracelet, just pick whichever one that you like um, and, and get the matching set. But yeah, I'll just show you the, uh, the design itself. So I'll just get my little mat out of the way and let's just have a look. Where is my little bead mat? Here we go. One little bead mat. So uh, let's zoom in actually. There we go. So you can see it's this gorgeous cross hatching effect. Some of the kits, like this particular one, are just um, one color, but the majority of them are in fact two colorways. So you can see here I've got lots and lots of different designs, but we've tried uh, color choices, but we've tried to do them in really beautiful matching tones. Uh, I think we've got six colors available, uh, which one of them I don't seem to have, but that's okay. That's the one I'm going to be demonstrating with anyway. Uh, this one's the Masquerade. We've got the, um, the Burgundy, the Poseidon. This one I really love, the Aztec Gold. We've also got the Autumn Glow, which is this sort of coppery mix color one as well. Those are what the bracelets look like. So you can see it's got that gorgeous hex sort of herringbone pattern on it. But also I am, which is brand new today, as I've said, we've got the necklace design, which looks absolutely spectacular, I think. Uh, which I'll put it sideways. So I know it'll look kind of sidewaysy, but uh, at least that's the best way to fit the whole thing into the into the screen there. So the necklace here it comprises of three different sections. So you've got the first section is your herringbone uh, strap there. We've got the little uh, square corner section in the center that gives it that beautiful V drop shape right in the middle. Um, and then, of course, we've also got some really lovely, uh, I figured out a gorgeous way of tapering the necklace down so that um, it comes from being that wide little piece into being a, uh, like a, a really nice tapered sort of graduation from large to small. And then uh, down into the herringbone strap. Uh, I do also should show you, I've got ripple bead as my 
uh, as my little clasp. I think they're fantastic. They're almost like little beaded buttons uh, that you can use to make your clasps really, really fantastic, really easily like that. But essentially, all you have to do is just take your little beaded clasp. Let's just turn down the brightness a touch. There we go. There's your little uh, beaded ripple bead there, and it just pops inside of a little peyote stitch loop and creates that gorgeous necklace, which, as I said, I'm really excited for today's tutorial just because we can really go through the process of how to do the different stitches. The bracelet is done in a way that is a little bit different from the necklace. Uh, the but then yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you how to do the strap, how to do it in sort of the bracelet form. Because the thing that's a little bit different, actually, I should have left it on the on the hand camera to show you. The thing that's a bit different about this design is that you have an odd number of rows. So it kind of makes it a little bit more tricky to work with, but in the long run, it gives you a much better finished look. Uh, so there is that little finished one. The, in, when I say it's an odd number, you can see I've got three rows of black and two rows of white. So it's a different amount. Usually when you see uh, herringbone stitch, you have an even number. So you'd have three sets of black and three sets of white. I'm going to show you two different ways that you can do it in this sort of odd count herringbone stitch, I suppose it should be called. And then I'm going to show you how to make the gorgeous little strap piece because I think this bit is absolutely lovely. Um, so yeah, uh, I'll show you the... I know some people are wanting to know what the, the purple one looks like. So it's a mixture of this gorgeous satiny blue tone, this really vibrant purple tone there as well. And then this one, it's a really lovely silvery blue color, um, sort of silvery blue seed bead that I've got. So I've got my Checkmate bar beads and I've got, as always, size 10 Preciosa seed beads. Um, let's see. Uh, here we go. We've got Sharon. She said, hello from Buffalo, New York. Uh, you should, when you showed the necklace yesterday, I just had to order one, uh, order two. She loves the design. Great. Thank you for, for doing that one, Sharon. I'll just show you very, very, oh, and we've got Nicola here as well. She says she's here in Cardiff and able to watch live, which is lovely. I'm, I'm glad to hear it, Nicola. Uh, thanks for joining. Who's new, by the way? Um, let's just take a quick look at the Bead Spider website, <coughs> um, of course. Uh, so the homepage, here we are. This is today's homepage. Um, if you want to get the products from today's video, obviously the link in the description, if you're on YouTube or Facebook, you can do that. Otherwise, come to the Bead Spider website. Our homepage looks like this just here. So beadspider.co.uk. And then if you want to view the products, it's this purple button just here. If you want to come, if you don't have time to watch the tutorial in full today, you can watch it later. Just click this big button here and that will show you it. For example, if you missed yesterday's tutorial, you can click there and watch it. Miss Wednesdays, watch it there and so forth. But yeah, so if you want to see the products, you click this purple bar just here at the bottom and it will take you to the page where you can get any two necklace sets, as I said, at a discount. You can get any three bracelets for $22.50. Again, that's another nice little discount. You can get the matching necklace and bracelet together just here if you want to. So if you want a matching necklace and the matching bracelet kit, you can get that as well. Otherwise, if we scroll on down, I do have them all one by one individually. So here's the Autumn Glow necklace and its matching bracelet. We've got the Masquerade matching necklace and bracelet here. Here is the um, the necklace for the... There's that what the, the finished Twilight looks like, which is what I'm going to be demonstrating with. That's that one. The Aztec Gold, the Burgundy there. And then if we scroll on down, here is the Poseidon. And as promised... The uh, herringbone, the necklace pattern is there, and I've also got the bracelet pattern just here because they do use different techniques. Um, but yeah, so um, in case you missed it, don't forget the bugle bells uh, and decorations set is still available, so you can still get this little kit, and if you do get it, you will also get that gorgeous little um, 
free gift, which is this one here. So if you choose all three or any three colors, whichever ones you like, you will also get this gorgeous free gift bracelet included, all the instructions plus all the beads. Everything is in there. Right, let's get started with today's tutorial, shall we? Let's just zoom out a teeny weeny bit more so we can just get started. Oh, not too far. There we go. Right. Uh, I'm going to have a sip of tea. Uh, what's everybody's favorite color? Um, Jan says, I like the, uh, the Aztec one. Uh, what's your favorite? Also, we've got, um, is that one? Margaret Ann. She says, I'm a newbie to the channel. Thanks for dropping by, Margaret. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the show thus far. Um, if you're new, just like Margaret is, please do, um, click the little link in the description that says sign up for more tutorials and patterns because that is the best way to find out about our uh, tutorials. We email you just before we go live, um, like many of you will have been today, uh, and let you know what's coming and when. Um, also, definitely, if you're on Facebook, please do share this video. If you're on you, uh, if you're on YouTube, make sure you subscribe. You know all the usual things I say: like, share, subscribe, all of that. Please, please do me a favor uh, and do that for me, if you will. Um, lots of people giving their uh, favorites. I know lots of people are saying the purple. Good thing I'm demonstrating that one. Um, we've got let's see, Monica likes the purple. So does Chris, the the blue and purpley one. Um, lots and lots of different colors. My personal, Maxine's favorite is definitely the, uh, the Aztec, uh, the, sorry, the Poseidon-y color. Um, which, oh, I should mention actually, just before I get started, the bracelets do come with a really fun little instruction for making your own little, um, beaded toggle piece. See, here's another one. This one's a bit easier to see, maybe. So, uh, the, you do get the instructions. If you buy the kit, they always come with instructions. So no matter what kit you're buying, it does include the instructions as well. I should definitely mention that one. Um, so let's let's begin, shall we? First thing we need to do, we've got to cut ourselves a, um, a little bit of thread. That's always the first thing that we do. We need some thread, and then I'll just pick myself a little bead, and that's going to become my stopper. So... I've got this lovely big fellow just here. This is going to be my stopper bead. I'll take my Spidalon thread. I'm using Spidalon as I always do, or very often do. Um, oh, Stacy, Stacy agrees with Maxine. She says, I agree, that Poseidon is gorgeous. I love it too. But yeah, Maxine, she's a big fan of green, so uh, it's not a surprise that she likes that one. Let me just thread my needle here. Oh, wait a minute. Um, Oh, we've got Kaylee here as well. She says the, the blue is her favorite as well. So, wait, let's see. Just thread through there. Um, here we go. Uh, I actually really like, just as I'll mention it while I'm doing it, the masquerade I think is fantastic just because it works with um, pretty much anything that you wear. You can wear it with necklace. Uh, sorry, you can wear it with like bright, vibrant, colored uh, outfits. You can wear it with sort of more monochrome tone things. You can wear it in the day and you can wear it in the night. It's the nice thing about this particular design is it's very easy for it to be formal or casual uh, entirely based on what your outfit is. So I'm just weaving through this little bead a few times. Do you know what? We're too far out. Let's zoom in. Uh, yeah, so I'm just weaving through this bead a few times. It's just going to be a stopper. I'll go through it two or three times. Um, I've got a nice big bead here because then they're a bit easier to get off usually. Um, I think I've earned myself a nice little sip of tea. I've got the Matthew mug. Someone asked about it yesterday. I can't remember who it was. My Matthew mug with the dinosaur. It's back. Don't worry. It didn't go too far. It hasn't gone extinct yet. So let's take a look at the first little diagram, shall we? So it's this one here. Essentially what we're going to do, we're picking up uh, our first little piece just here. So the beads in a row, um, one seed bead, which, uh, as I said, I use Preciosa size 10 usually. So one seed bead, one bar. In, in terms of, wait, I'll just, I need to show you this. So in the necklace, I'll show you the difference between the two um, techniques. 
Uh, so the way that you do the, this isn't the good one to choose, here we go. The way that you do the bracelet, I work all the way down the entire length and back. Because it's sort of odd count, it's sort of a, a hack way of doing even count, as it were, herringbone, rather than odd count, so you can make the process much, much easier when you're doing a nice big long strap, is to just go down the entire length of it. So that's what I'm going to show you first. The second thing I'm going to show you is how to do your even style um, herringbone going back and forth this way, which is useful when you're doing the necklace, because you can't really do one long piece because you've got this sort of square um, point in the center. So I'll show you that and then as promised, like I said, I'll show you how to do the herringbone strap. But first things first, we're going to do a long piece like this. So the way you would do that, like the um, little image showed here, the little diagram, we just pick one color of our herringbone. It's gonna be our main color. So this one is gonna have more beads than any other. Uh, so I'll go along the entire length of my bracelet. I start with one bead and then just pick whichever color it is and you just kind of go along one bar, three seed beads, one bar, three seed beads, one bar, three seed beads, always in the same color. So, um, Let's just hope my camera comes back into focus. I don't know why it's lost focus all of a sudden. Here we go. Good. Now I can bring it back. So yeah, one bar, one, um, three seed beads, one bar, three seed beads, one bar, three seed beads, just like that. So I'll do myself a nice little strap. It doesn't matter how long it is that you're doing in this particular style. Um, oh, we've got someone, uh, Wow, Blossom Learning. She's just joined us. She's over on YouTube. She says it's 5.15 in the morning where she is. Whereabouts are you watching where it's 5.15 a.m.? You must be in, I don't know, Hawaii or something, maybe. Who knows? Um, please comment in and let me know where you're watching from. Uh, yeah, like she said, it's, it's 5.15 a.m. there. Uh, that is some dedication to the beadwork. But as it's your very first time, thank you so, so much for joining us. I really appreciate it. Uh, yep, I was right. It is Hawaii. What a guess. Good grace. Uh, there we go. So let's just slide these beads down, pick up a few more. Let me just sort of continue along. I've got a piece of sticky tape. I need to remove this so it doesn't keep getting caught on my thread. There we go. So once we've got one seed bead there and however many beads, it doesn't matter. I'll just sort of show you a few inch piece to get started. Not too long. Let's go maybe two more rows. Yeah. And one, two, three. Slide that down. And then finally we do one more bar and then finish with, oh, I should see if it's uh, gonna fit. No, it's not. Uh, finish with three little seed beads. So I'll just show the diagram very, very quickly. You do whatever length it is that you need to do, but you make sure that you end with three seed beads. So here we go. Let's just pop it back over to me. Here we go. And what we're going to do now is just uh, sort of weave back. These three beads on the end here are going to become our edging piece. Uh, so if we have a look, see how along each edge we have three little beads. That's what we need to create at the end. So if we said this was our start of our bracelet and we go all the way along to the end, we need to create the first little weave back on ourselves. So the way that we do that is just picking up the thread and weaving directly through the top hole of that same end bar bead. So if we have a quick look at where I am, I'll put myself into right-handed view, because I know most people prefer it that way. Uh, there we go. Um, oh, Margaret, Margaret Ann said, I signed up for the newsletter, but I haven't received my code for the five pound voucher. Um, Margaret, it should have just arrived. As soon as you say, yes, sign me up, um, it should arrive in your inbox instantly. If it didn't turn up, Maybe just try again, because it's possible you may have um, accidentally put your um, 
your code, your email address in in wrong for something. Like for example, instead of putting .com at the end of the email, you may have accidentally put .co, or instead of a full stop, put a, a hash or something like that. Just a, a minor typo error it would be the most likely cause of what that is. So anyway, as I've said, uh, now that I'm stabbing myself with a needle, we're going to start working backwards. So with that uh, in mind, I'll just take my needle through the top hole of this bead here. Let's zoom in, shall we? So we can really see what I'm doing. Oh, wow, we've got someone from Colombia here as well. Fantastic. Um, here we go. Who's that one? It's Maribel has just joined us from Colombia. And then we've got Ruti uh, from Jerusalem as well. It's a very multicultural crowd we've got today. I'm glad my beadwork can uh, be bringing us all together across the world. Isn't that nice? I don't know if we've got any Australians here today because it's probably a ridiculous time of hour, uh, a ridiculous time of, of, of the middle of the night. So... Um, here we go. Just pull that nice and tight, just there. And then you can see as I pull it, it sort of will lock those beads. Oh, can't see it. Lock those beads nicely onto the end of that little bar right there. So um, essentially, once we're at this point, we start doing that herringbone, um, that herringbone style stitch. So if we take a look at our next diagram, what we're going to do um, is pick up one seed bead and one bar bead. So that's all we need to pick up for now, just those uh, one seed bead and one bar bead. And what we're going to do, as you can see there, that little seed bead at the base of the bar bead that we're currently exiting, we're going to go through just that one, the very, very nearest seed bead, and then through the top hole of the next bar bead along our row, back towards our stopper bead. So essentially I'll pick up one seed bead and one bar bead, like so. There it is, one seed bead and one bar ba bead. Um, there we go. And I'm going to go through the very first seed bead. Wait, let's flip it over so it actually matches the, uh, the diagram a bit better. Uh, Getting myself in a twist. There we go. So pick up one seed bead and one bar bead. And then I'm going to go down through this first little seed bead here. And then up into the top hole of my bar bead. See that? That top hole there? That's where I need to go through. So first things first. It doesn't matter if it's a little bit loose for now. Go through that first little seed bead. And then into that top bar bead just there. So we pull that out nice and tight. It should just flip on over and pop nicely into position. So just pull it tight, tight, tight like that. And then you'll see, what have I done? Have I twisted myself here? Where am I? Yeah, there we go. Pull that tight and you can see it sort of starts that little cross T shape happening then what we do we pick up one more bar bead one more seed bead and one more bar bead like that so a seed bead followed by a bar bead here we go i'll show you in the diagram there it is so see how on the right there it sort of pulled it a bit tight we pick up one seed bead one bar bead again we go through that first little um uh through that first little seed bead and then jump across to the next bar bead so just Zoom out a tiny touch here because I think I'm sort of getting myself a bit in the way of the camera when I'm working. So here we go. I'll go through that first little seed bead just here. I'll pick it up and show you how to hold it in a minute, but I'm trying to keep it flat on the table so it's a bit easier to see what I'm doing. Uh, so through that first seed bead and then through the top hole of that bar bead. So there we go. So see that? Through the first seed bead and then through the top hole of the bar bead. It doesn't matter too much if it's a little bit loose just now. We can pull it tight in a little bit. So holding that end bar, we'll pull it nice and tight. And it should all nicely just pull perfectly into shape. It's coming together. Don't worry too much about it yet. It'll pull, pull together when we get to the end of the row. So we pick up again one seed bead and one bar bead, and we repeat that until we get to the very, very end. So 
through that first little seed bead after. It's definitely easier to do this in your hands, by the way. I'm only doing it on the mat so that it's kind of a bit clearer to see, but maybe I'm having a bit too much struggles. There we go. So that pulls that one nicely into shape. Grab the next seed bead and the next bar bead. Oh, do you know what? I just realized something. Uh, uh, I just realized I forgot. I was meant to be doing my second color of bead here. What a fool. Oh, well, I'll show you that in a second. So we go through that next one here. This is just how you would do it if you were doing just one color. I'll show you how to add in your second color in a second. It's pretty much exactly the same, but, you know, it's fine. Uh, through that first little seed bead and now through the top hole of our next bar bead. So pull that through there too. And we're almost at the end of this row. Let's pull that there. And now one seed bead, one bar bead. And finally, we're gonna go through this little seed bead just before the stopper there. So get my thread out the way. Through this seed bead one last time. And then up through the top hole of our little bar bead. So where is it? There it is. Just before our stopper, the top hole of the bar, and now ready. As I do this, or well, now that I'm at the end, you could have been pulling earlier if you want to, but I kind of like doing it all at the end just because it's satisfying when you pull it all together at once that you get this really lovely shape really starting to finally come together. So pull that nice and firm, and then you can see you really do start to get that herringbone. Oh, sorry, it's gone massively out of focus there. I'm trying to keep my hands out of the way. There we go. There's that herringbone really starting to take shape. So if you just put your fingers over the top so it's not moving anywhere, I can continue to pull it. And then there you go. Now it's sitting much, much cleaner. So see how we've got three beads along one side and then one bead at the other? This is the bottom row. So you can see on my little piece there. See how one side has all three beads in a row and the other has one and one and one and one like this. Um, just like that there. So that's really sort of simple, easy and nice and sits perfectly in position. I'll just do one last little stitch which is going to turn us around. So let's just show you in diagram form here. Last thing I'm going to do is pick up one more seed bead and one more bar and I'm going to go through that last seed bead just before our twin bead. So then uh, I'll just show you that first and then we'll continue on after that, shall we? Yes. So one seed bead and one bar bead. Oops. Get my tail thread out the way. We don't want to be getting caught around our tail. So uh, just pull that back into shot there. There we go. So through that last little seed bead here, pull that through there. And then we can do our turn. So see how, wait, I'll turn it upside down so that we're working sort of up the screen rather than down it. There we go. And now, there. So see that? I've just come out. I'm just from this bead just here, just before this, uh, the stopper. That's where I'm coming out. So now what I need to do is just turn back around again, which is this little bead just here, pick up two seed beads, and go back up through this top section. And that will sort of bring us back into position to continue going back the other way. Because I want to keep working in the same direction, I'm going to just flip my work over, like so. So now I can continue working in this direction again, because I find working that way is, is easier for me. I prefer to continue working in the same direction again and again and again if I'm doing a long piece like this, so I find that's a bit easier. Time for a sip of tea, I think. Hmm. Now, what we do next with our little thread coming out just here is take, so let's have a look at our diagram, of course. We take two seed beads and we pass up through the top hole of that same little, um, 
bar that we're currently exiting. So this is the time when you would want to pull it nice and tight, just to make sure it's fairly firm, like so. Get it really firm like that. And now we pick up two seed beads, one and two, and we can bring ourselves back. So through that top bead just there, and pull nice and firmly. There we go. How's that looking? So now we've got a row of three beads on that outside edge, plus we've got our row of three beads. And um, shall I bring in the second color? Yeah, let's bring in the second color. So bringing in the second color is really, really easy. You just pick up one seed bead and your second seed bead here. So for example, this one here, if I wanted to, maybe I'll do this one as two blues and one purple in the center. That could be, that could be quite nice. What do you think? So I'll go one blue here. I've got my next blue to bring in my next color. I'm just gonna do an entire row with the purple beads now. So just thread that down and you can see there's only the one bead to go into. So if you just pass through that little bead and then you can see how the, the sort of the next bead is already in position. We're going to go through that next bead just there, which let me show you the diagram. Here it is. So see that we go through that first little bead and then up and into that top little um, top hole of that little bar bead that we're just in now. So pull that nice and tight uh, and then you'll see where did I just go? Where's my thing? So through this little seed bead and then through the top hole of that bar bead. And then as we pull that tight, it will again lock it into that nice little herringbone pattern. See that? So there we go. Pull that nice. Um, there we go. And we repeat that process until we get to the end of the row. So just again through the seed bead. I'm going to pick it up in a second and show you how to hold it now that it's sort of getting a bit clearer. So again, through the next little seed bead and the um, top of the bar bead, and then just take your time to make sure it's sitting nicely. So see that? There we go. Uh, oh, we've got Julie who's just joined. She said, hi from Colorado. Hi, Julie. Thanks for joining us. Um, let's just take our next one here, and then I'll start picking it up, I think. So, first, the way I like to pick it up, let's just zoom out a touch, is just holding it like this, so I've got it sort of resting in my hand, and then with my index finger and my thumb, I hold the bar that I'm exiting. That gives me a nice little spot to get some purchase from, and then as I pull really tightly, I keep my uh, thread between my index finger and my middle finger here. So that way I've got this bead secure and the thread secure. That makes it really easy to work with your beadwork. So if I just hold it in a way that you can see, there you go. Now I'm through that next seed bead and the next bar. And then as I pull that, I can just make sure it stays nicely on this side of the work, my thread here, and pull that tight. And there you go and then that will lock that in place. We grab one more seed bead and one more bar. And again, we go through that little seed bead first. I can pull it tight now, even if I want to, whatever works better for you, pull it whenever you want. And then again, I'm holding it between my index and my middle finger. That's how I keep my tension nice and firm. I go through the top hole of the next bar along. So pull, pull, pull nice and tight, and then I can pull that bar, hold the bar, and sort of just my fingers, so I'm holding the next bar. Pick up one seed bead and one purple. Go through the seed bead at the base here, down there. Can you see where I am at? Let's zoom back in again. There we go. Um, there we go. Through there, pull that nice and tight. Get it with my index and middle finger and then go through that little top hole of the bar bead there as well. Pull that tight and then we're almost ready to turn around again. So we'll do one seed bead, one bar bead, and then we're at our final little seed bead there. So we can go through there, pull that tight, and now you can see 
we're in position to turn around again. So I'll pick up two seed beads. Oh, I can see lots of comments coming through. Uh, Blossom Learning. Uh, I think I missed what your name was, but she says, I love those colors. Uh, I love them too. Um, I've made this design with super duos. Most twin beads work well with this design. Yes, you're right. That's from Linny. Uh, that is a, a very good point. Um, so there you go. I've added those two beads at the top now. And now I'll just flip my work over. So now my tail thread is the other way. And I will continue on. So pinch the bar bead that my thread is exiting between my index and thumb. And then hold the thread nice and tight with my thread there. You can see it's almost turning my fingers yellow how much I'm tightening, holding tight. It's losing the color in my finger. See that? Look at that. <laughs> um, now what I'm going to do is pick up one seed bead and one bar and go through that next little seed bead here and through that top hole. So this is essentially even count herringbone stitch. In a second, I'm going to show you how to do odd count herringbone stitch. So that's going to be quite fun. We'll start off in very much the same sort of way, but let's just sort of continue this and I'll show you how you can add on your little clasp. So as we continue like this, just add on these beads, few and few, just as we continue. And I think this is actually going to be a happy, a happy mistake in the end, where I'm going to come up with a fun new design almost from having made a mistake at the beginning. So you just kind of continue along going through the seed bead and then the top hole of the next bar. So that's your herringbone stitch that you do. So you just continue along and work until you get to the very, very end. It's really, really easy when you're doing the, the even count stitch like this, just because it looks super duper effective and it's really easy to do and you know there's almost no trouble. So don't forget though, I almost forgot, go through a little bit out of focus there. So yeah, there, go through that top hole of every time, make sure you're exiting from a twin bead before you start picking up, uh, sorry, a, a bar bead before you start picking up your next one. So keep going like this. And then we're almost at this end of this row again. And I'll show you one last time um, how to turn around, but I think I'll flip it back into left-handed view for you lefties like me, eh? What do you think? So let's just pop it into left-handed view again. There we go. Now it looks like I'm a left-hander. And I'll show you how to do the end as a lefty. So again, I'll pick up one seed bead and one bar bead, and I'm going to go through this final little seed bead at the end, like this. And because there's no more bar beads to go through, I just hold my little bar previous down below and then pick up two seed beads and just work my way back up. There we go. And that will get us in position, flip it over to continue again. So I'm going to I'm going to finish this just because I want to see how the, the 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 final design looks with sort of four and one with like a, a racing stripe almost down the middle of my design here. So let's just pick it up nicely. One seed bead and one bar. And then what do we think? Do you think this is going to look good? I think this is. I think this is going to look nice. I'm looking forward. Um, let's see. Uh, who have we got? Ah, Linny says, I'm a lefty too. Uh, it makes some patterns quite challenging. Well, um, Hopefully, if you haven't seen many, if you haven't used our bead spider patterns before, because I'm a left-hander, I try and do it so that the diagrams and the words are sort of like, if you only had one, it would be enough, but I give you both, if you know what I mean. So you've got the text should be descriptive enough that it does tell you everything that you need to do, but then the diagram will also show you how to do it as well. So and vice versa. If you're if you, so if you're more of a sort of learn from reading rather than from diagrams, I've sort of got you covered because I try and make the the text really really clear for you. Um, here we go. So let's just go there and then pull that, and we're almost at the end. And then I'll show you how to finish off the opposite side. Here we go. 
And then through that last little bead. And then one more here. And through that last little bead. There we go. And that will lock them all in place. And now, look at that. That actually looks really good. I'm really happy with that. What do you think? That looks really nice. That's effective. Like a, the, the little racing stripe look. It looks really good. Um, oh, I've got a great little comment. I want to show it. I'm going to pop that on the second. Here we go. Uh, I'm going to... Uh, I should just leave this up for the whole show. Uh, the patterns are so easy to follow. Bead spider patterns are the best. I'm glad you think so, Evelyn. That's a glowing review. Thank you very, very much. Uh, but don't forget, all of our kits, they do include the patterns. Right, now, uh, let me show you how to finish off the opposite side. So see how this has all three beads down the edge? We want to have the same on this side. So let's just pick up two seed beads and weave back again. So up through this little edge here. And you can see we've got three beads all along the edge here and then finally we'll pick up one two beads now and go down this just this seed bead and the next bar so there you go and then that gives it that nice little framing along the edge so then we do the same again one two seed beads down that nice edge there there we go. And then up through that next bar. And then let's pop it back into right-handed view for these final few beads. I almost forgot I was having it in left-handed mode. Pick up two more seed beads. Go down that little edge. And then up here. By the way, um, apparently the quality of the stream is a little bit better over on Facebook. So, uh, sorry, over on YouTube. So if you have good, fast internet and you want to see me in full high definition, uh, use our YouTube stream. If your internet is a little bit slower or if you want to save a little bit of data, watch the Facebook stream because that one, the quality is just that tiny bit lower uh, as dictated by Facebook and sort of means that if your internet is a bit slower, you'll get a smoother experience. So there we go. Now I'll just go through that last little bead now. And you can see, there we have one finished little section, just like this, and looks absolutely gorgeous, done and dusted, and literally that would do the entire process. You can do this, Jan asks, I, I assume you could carry on making it wider if you wanted to. Yes, you can, Jan. Um, now, uh, Oh, this is a nice, another nice comment. Sue Devney says, I agree, best instructions I've seen. Uh, I'm glad you all like them. Um, those are, those are my, my, my diagrams and text I assume you're talking about. Uh, but thank you very much, I appreciate that. Um, now, um, so yeah, that's how you could do that. That would give you that odd count looking bracelet, even though you've done it in even count. Now I'll show you how we'll do odd count properly. So I suppose actual odd count herringbone stitch. So I'll give myself another little thread here. And we always start off pretty much the same way. So cut. That was how you would do the bracelet. Now I'm going to show you the technique that I do in the necklace. Because this is a little bit different, the little necklace here is a bit different. I'm going to show you a slightly different technique to how to do that, which uh, where's my needle here? If you want to see, by the way, the instructions, let me show you what the actual instructions look like. I've got a set just here. So this is the new labyrinth necklace instruction. But you can see I've got... Wait a minute, let's just turn down the brightness for a second. Here we go. You can see... Oh, am I? Yeah, I'm in the right way. You can see diagram after diagram, but so much text to accompany it as well. So it should hopefully be really, really easy for you to follow. doesn't want to focus for some reason. Uh, oh, there we go. So yeah, loads and loads of diagrams, loads of text. This is just the first page, but there's five pages. So then the next page, you can see again, it goes through the entire process from beginning to end all the way through. There's 40 diagrams in total for this necklace. So uh, I definitely put a lot of time and effort into 
the entire process, how to do the corner as well, um, how to do the the tapering. Doing the corner and the tapering was a lot of fun. It was sort of a, a bit higgledy-piggledy and here and there and everywhere, but it was, it was really fun to work out the best way, which these instructions do come with your kit. See, there's how to do the clasp as well um, and the strap and everything. But yeah, you do get these instructions with the kit. So make sure if you're going to go and grab the kit. Unfortunately, stock is relatively limited because these bar beads are difficult to get a hold of. Um, so uh, now let's show you how to do the next stage, the next type of stitch. Let's just turn my face down again. There we go. Um, Kaylee says, I'm definitely a visual learner. I love these lives. They're so valuable, I think. Um, who's new, by the way? I know we've seen a few people who said that they were new earlier. Who else is new? If you're new um, and you're only just sort of coming to the community, the bead spider community, put a little comment in saying hello and I'll pop you up on the screen so that everybody can say hello to you as well in the comments too. Um, so yeah, definitely please do comment in if you're brand new so that I can pop you up on the screen. Um, oh, don't forget everybody, uh, it's Saturday, so if you want to get featured on the show today, send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk so that I can get you on the show, as I usually do. I'll just put it at the ticker at the bottom. Um, here we go. Is it this one? Yes, here we go. So yeah, I'll, I'll leave that there for a minute. So everyone, if you, uh, I know we've got quite a few pictures already, uh, but send your pictures in so that I can um, show them off live at the end here. I'm going to just go through my stopper bead once, twice, three times a lady. Um, just here real quickly. There we go. Uh, if, you haven't, if you haven't noticed by now, I do like to live my life in lyrics. Whenever there comes an opportunity to quote a song lyric, uh, I'll do it whenever I can. Uh, now, so I've got my little stopper bead just here, and I'm going to do more or less exactly the same process again, but this time, like I said, it's going to be the technique for doing the odd count herringbone. So we start exactly the same way, which we will start with just the one color, but um, one seed bead first. So I'll just lay them out on the on the table here. One seed bead, one bar, three seed beads, one bar, three seed beads, and finally our third bar. Because we're doing because we want to do like the the five the five beads here. So my primary my main color is the one that we do three. And then my secondary color I'll do in twos. So I'll show you how we do that now. So I'm going to be doing my primary color first, my main color, color one, right here. So I'll pick up one seed bead, one bar, three seed beads, one bar, three seed beads, and finally one bar bead. So I'll slide it down to my stopper. And then I'll just work backwards exactly the same way as I would usually. Um, here also, I'll just pop this at the bottom. Um, this is a, a little bit of different text for you to read uh, while I'm doing this. And then I'll pop it back into, into the right view. So just as before, we start off exactly the same way, but only the three beads that we need. Because that's going to give us... I mean, if you, it doesn't matter. You just do whatever is sort of the right amount for you. You need to do one, uh, your first row needs to be an odd number. So either three, five, um, you know, seven, nine, however many, depending on how wide you want it to be. This is going to be along the width of our strap. So if you want to have a thicker strap, you can also do this, but you do need to have an odd number here. So um, first things first, we do this, we pick up now our second color, because we need to fill in the gaps, we go through that first little seed bead here. Don't know why I'm doing this towards myself. It would be working much easier if I did it away from myself, but doesn't matter. I'm trying to keep it as steady as possible so that you can see what I'm doing. Through that top hole and through that bead there. Pull that nice and tight. Oops. Come on now. And there, pulls nice and tightly, 
and that will get us roughly in position. The first row is always the most difficult to do, but don't worry, you will get there eventually. And maybe I should zoom out because then I don't have to be quite as steady handed. Right, now pick up one seed bead and another of our secondary color. We go through that first seed bead after just there. And then pick up and go through that next little thing here. So now usually what would happen to continue on this process, I would need to Oops, just flips it over there so that they're all the same direction. Let's do it on the table. Makes it a bit easier, I think. A bit too far from my stopper. Let's slide down to the stopper first, shall we? Get it nice and tight. Yes, Jermaine says, I always do the first row on the bead mat because it's easier. Uh, there we go. So now we're sort of much better into position. And what we need to do now because we don't want to go into this bead, we sort of need to turn ourselves around. So what we do first is sort of bring ourselves around in a little circle. So I'll pick up two seed beads to complete the edge of this row. And instead of going away towards the, the, the stopper bead, we're going to go in from the stopper bead and into our little bar. So just pull that nice and tightly. like so. And then we go through just the first two seed beads here. I find two is enough. One, two, through there. Pull it all the way through just those two. And now I need to come back out of this same bar bead. So see how this is the one with the stopper bead. We're going to go back through that top hole and through just the first seed bead. We only have to do this the very, very first time. Don't worry. It's a bit fiddly the first time, but then it's much easier thereafter. So we pull that tight. Everything should be fairly firm now, should be sitting quite nicely. Uh, if we have a little look, I can just lay them all down. There we go. So that's sitting quite nicely. And I'm coming... Oh, actually, I've got that upside down. So there we go. So now I'm coming out of, get my tail out of the way, this little seed bead just here. There we go. So see that? I'm coming out of this seed bead here. Let's put it into right-handed view. Now is a good time, I think. Put it in right-handed view. I'm coming out of this little seed bead just here. There we go. And what I need to do now is sort of add on this is this is the the sort of the 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 difficult part i guess so we pick up first one of our color one bar beads because we want to start our next row of color one bar beads we slide that down pick up three seed beads so that we're completing that edge and then we go down the same See uh, the same bar bead, but on the opposite side. See that? So just down there, just like that. Easy peasy thus far. And now what we're going to do is go back down this exact same seed bead that we're coming out of. So you'll see it does look a little bit twisty twirly when you do that, but it doesn't really matter. You'll see in a second. I'll pull it nice and tight. It comes all the way fairly firm. There we go. Get it nice and tight. Like that. And that sits relatively close to this. But you can see it's like floppy and it twists and it rotates. Don't worry, it's not a problem. So now, now that I've got my first couple of rows, I need to continue doing this row of my color one bead. So I've got it held nicely between my fingers. So I've got the beads between my thumb and index and then the thread between my index and ring finger. I'll pick up one seed bead and one of my color one beads and go through that seed bead at the base there and through the top hole of the bar bead. So our normal herringbone pattern um, weave. Just pull that nice and tight and you can see that sort of puts it in the right position. Do it again. 
one seed bead and one bar bead down that first little seed bead here and we can do our turn so now see how we're just sticking out here we just pick up two seed beads um, Katie's just joined this hi Katie thanks for for joining Katie tab uh, so there we go now I'm ready to do my turn so I'll come back down and lock that nicely in place pick up now I'll, I'll flip it over so that I'm ready to work comfortably again hold my thread here now I'm gonna keep it between these two fingers I think because I'm sort of working the opposite way whatever works easier for you one seed bead and one of my second color bar beads and I'll go through that little seed bead at the base and then the top of my next bar bead along so that normal herringbone stitch we're almost back to where we were so there we go one seed bead and one bar and now see how I told you this was a bit floppy at the beginning because technically both sides of your thread get my tail out the way if I can so see how both threads technically are coming out of both this hole and this hole is attached to just this seed bead so it doesn't really matter you can connect to this side you can connect to that side whichever one seems like it might work better you go through that and also through the first seed bead so just the first seed bead not more only the first one pull that tight and now that will lock us into place and there you go you've done your first stitch in odd count herringbone how does that look looks great don't you think um, now I'll just show you again at once we're at this point we do the same again so we do our turn we pick up one bar bead three little seed beads like that slide them down to the end and then we go through the top the second hole of this same seed bead so that this same bar bead so that seed beads will be locked onto the outside of it there and then down into the other side of it pull it tight and we go through that same seed bead that we're exiting at the start of this step pull that nice and tight and then that creates the next little edge piece and then all we've got to do is just go through that top hole of our bar bead pull it tight make sure your thread doesn't get caught anywhere like mine just did is it caught yes ouch stab myself with a needle too just for good measure but make sure it doesn't get caught around your little piece there take it over the top there we go and then pull that tight and now we're ready to continue doing that next little um, row so again I'll show you just once more all the way to the end so we've got our thread fairly tight there pull it firm hold it nice and tightly with your tension with your fingers there go through wait for it to focus here we go so we're coming out and now we just weave back again in our normal herringbone stitch so we're doing a row of blue beads again keep our thread there pick up one seed bead and one blue again through here we do our turn so one two back up through the top hole got my concentration tongue going flip it over and now we do our purple row so pick up our purple do one oops just out of shot there sorry do one purple bead and through the next little seed bead and now again at this point we can decide which side looks better do I want to go through this hole or that hole it doesn't matter this one seems like it's a little bit looser I tend to go through the hole that seems a bit looser through there pull it tight try not to get caught on my thread which have I done no I haven't pull it tight and there you go 
We're back in position now and ready to continue doing the odd count herringbone stitch. So we pick up last time, I'll show you it one last time, pick up one bar bead, pick up three seed beads, oops, just out of shot while I'm doing this, and then I'm going to go through the second side of my bar bead like this, straight through there. And then on this piece here, I'm going to go back down through this same seed bead that I'm already coming out of and the top hole of that next little piece. So pull that through. I can see pictures are coming through. So good, good work, everyone. Just keep sending us in your pictures. I want to see them. We've got plenty to show already, but let's always have more. I always want more pictures to show at the end. So there we go. So there's that one there. Now we'll pick up a blue... Go through that next little seed bead and the top hole of the bar. Pull it tight. Whoops, I did it the wrong way around. Ha ha ha. That's a mistake that you might make. If you find that you've got two seed beads beside each other, it's because you put the bar on and then the seed bead. So if you make a little mistake like that, easy peasy, take your needle off, unthread it, and re-thread it back on. By the way, let me just show you another little trick that is going to be very useful because this pattern uses quite a bit of thread. Just before I show you how to do um, the the two strand, the, the, the strap section, how to do this strap section, I'm going to show you how to extend your thread because it's a very, very useful and important thing to know how to do. So if we see my little thread just here, let's just say I've been weaving, 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 and now I've only got maybe just a, a tiny bit of thread left. So see this? Here's my little bit of thread. I'm going to show you how to extend your thread because it's a very, very useful technique to know. So if I just bring myself, get myself some more thread, whatever size length is useful for you, uh, there we go. I've got my new piece of thread here now. And this black thread is going to be really easy to show you how to do that um, weaver's knot, it's called. I'll zoom in so we can get as much detail as possible. Here we go. And what we're going to do now is what's called a weaver's knot. So this is a great way to extend your thread. If you're running out of thread, you're almost completely out. You take your little thread just here. Maybe I'm a bit too close, actually. There we go. You've got your thread. And I'm going to take my... I've got my long end of my thread down here in my hand. And then I've got the short piece just up here. See, look, there's the end of it. And what I'm going to do is take this and turn it into... A little loop. So I'll take this short side over the top of the long side. So thus far, here's my long thread. It goes underneath, comes around, and then over the top like this. See that? So now I've got a little cross. See there? So the loop is, the short tail is on the top of the short one. Now what I'll do is take my fingers inside of this loop. If you want to make it a bit bigger, you always can. It's not a problem. Make it a little bit bigger. Take your fingers inside of this loop and grab this little tail. Once you've grabbed your tail, you can let go and then see the end of the tail here. We pinch that and we pinch our, uh, our long thread together. So see that? There's my long piece down here. Here's my tail. Here's my, um, my, my short one. And then this is that little loop that I've just pulled through. And as you do that, it creates this teeny weeny. Let's see if it will focus on it. There you go. See how there's a tiny little knot just here? See that? We can pull these threads. Now, let's wait for it to get into focus again. There we go. Pull these threads and that little loop will shorten and shorten and shorten and shorten till it's quite small. See that? And now what we've got to do is just take our tiny little thread, our excess piece just here, and we can just loop it inside of that thread there. So see that? It's nicely inside 
or that loop. Then all I've got to do is just pull my loop until it's almost closed. See that? It's almost closed. And what I do now, which I think is very, very important, is you hold it really firm in one hand, really firm in the other hand, like so, and with a quick, sharp sort of shock, you go pull like that outward. And you'll hear, you probably didn't hear it because the microphone's all the way over here, uh, but you get a little click sound. So you go click and you'll hear it. It's almost sort of like the sound of your fingernails. Oh, here, I'll do it right here. Hear that? It'll sound a bit like that. So once it's inside and it's locked in, it will sound like that. And then that means it's ready now to weave with. So see, if you have a look, if I pull on it, I've got one very, very long thread now. Look at that, one massively long thread. So much, much easier now to continue on. It saves me having to weave all the way back and get rid of it all. I know I've got a tiny little knot here, but if you've got a nice fine thread, it shouldn't be a problem at all. How handy is that little, um, little thing there? Uh, we've got Anne Gold has just put a little comment in. She's just said, you use a weaver's knot in lace making. It's a very effective and secure knot. That's right. So now I can just continue on. So I'll pick up my thread and I'll stitch just a few, next few little beads. Here we go. And you can continue as normal. So hold your thread out the way. I know we've got two extra threads, but we'll get rid of those later. You can cut them quite short a bit later. Not yet though. Go through that next bead and we just weave like normal now. Oh, sorry, put out a shot there. So yeah, weaving like normal now. So I know that little knot can be a little difficult. See, ready? This is where the knot is at that point. If I just pull, there we go. It's through and I've got, these are my two tail threads from before. Pull that through and you can see the knot is now just coming out of this other little side. So I'll pick up one seed bead and one blue bar bead and go through and just continue. And now you can see that that knot has completely disappeared. Uh, and I'll just turn around, do a few more little rows. And then once you're comfortable that you've gone far enough, you can either take your needle and weave these two little threads in if you're feeling comfortable. Otherwise, just take your scissors right now if you want. And just cut them at the right at the bead. There you go. And you can see the thread's now gone. You can't see it. You can't even tell it was there. And you're ready to continue weaving. Uh, easy peasy. Now, um... Uh, have a sip of my tea. And I'm going to show you how to do the, the strap section, essentially now. So again, I'll just cut myself one little piece of thread. Won't need to be too long for this. And get out a stopper bead, as before. Go through it. So this is three different ways to do herringbone stitch. Um, hi to Mona, by the way, who's just joined us from Canada. Thanks for watching. Uh, I hope you're enjoying the show, everybody, today. Um, oh, yes, Jermaine says, yes, he knows all the old songs. You're right. He wore an incy wincy teeny weeny yellow polka dot bikini. Uh, that was a comment that just came in. There we go. See, what, some, someone commented that in. And then someone said, where is it? He might not know it because he's too young, but I do know it. I do. Uh, right, so uh, let's just continue on now and I'll show you how to do the standard style two strand herringbone stitch. So this is also exceedingly simple. Uh, what thread am I using? So Julie asks, what thread am I using? I am using Spidalon beading thread. So if you take a look on the Bead Spider website, we have a whole color range of Spidalon thread. It's a pre-bonded nylon monofilament, so it doesn't fray, it doesn't um, ravel. It's like really, really easy to work with. I absolutely love it. So 
Um, yes, let's do our two two strand little um, fella here. So the first thing we're going to do is one seed bead and one bar. This one's the easiest one, you'll see. Uh, here we go. So there we go. One seed bead and one bar. And now already we're ready to do our turnaround. So essentially one seed bead and one bar up through... Whoops, I need three seed beads now. And up through the top hole. I'll do it on the table just so that we can really see what I'm doing. Uh, where am I? Am I in position? There we go. So through the top hole of that little bar bead. So there we go. And now we pick up one seed bead and our other color. And we go through that little seed bead that we added just before, between our stopper and our bar. There we go. Wait, I'll wait for it to focus. There we go. We go through there and then just pull that nice and tight. And that will lock that one into place as well. Then we pick up three more seed beads and just go into the top. There we go. Oh, sorry, I only need two seed beads. Oh, well, doesn't matter. Just pretend I did two seed beads and not three. So if you do three seed beads, then come on. Wait, I'm too zoomed in, sorry. There we go, the camera's having a bit of struggle. Yes, I accidentally added three seed beads. You're only meant to add two seed beads at this point, three every other time. I wasn't paying attention. So you can see you've got too many seed beads. What you would do is just take your needle off, unthread it, remove a bead, and then come back. But because I couldn't be bothered, I'm going to just continue on with one extra bead for now. Because <laughs> I'm lazy. Um, so we pick up one seed bead and a blue. Try and keep my fingers as far out the way as possible. Pull that nice and tight. Keep it under my finger, pick up two seed beads, and go up there. Pull it tight again, pick up one seed bead and a purple. How easy is this one? This one's definitely the easiest. Maybe I should have started with this. This is the easiest one ever. Uh, there we go. Pull that tight. And then we do a turn. So we pick up two seed beads and turn around up one seed bead, one bar, and this comes together really, really quickly. There we go. Pull it again. Two seed beads, and up. If you haven't got it yet, by the way, make sure you don't miss out on our kit. It's a fantastic deal on at the moment. It's brand new today, and so if you haven't got it yet, the kit is fantastic value, but it will show you the entire process. So our kits, they do include absolutely everything. Um, everything is included. So you've got the thread, you've got the needle, you've got the beads, you've got the full instructions. You don't have to buy them as well. Um, all of that. Uh, the needle as well as in there. Absolutely everything. We try to give you all of it because especially coming up to Christmas if you wanted to give this as a gift to somebody uh, You don't want them to have to go and then get extra bits as well Everything is included. So um, Yeah Ready to just wrap up and give to someone special um, Whether or not you make it or they make it is entirely up to you. I suppose Now. Um, yeah. So yeah, you can see this one comes together really, really quickly. This little strap piece there, they're super cute and super fun to make. Um, there we go. And that'll ought to do me, I think. Uh, Colleen Rose just joined. Hi, Colleen. I haven't seen you for a while. Thanks for popping by. Um, I was wondering when I might see you next. Thanks for thanks for watching, Colleen. Um, Colleen's one of our regular viewers over on YouTube. Uh, she was she very kindly sent me a little gift in the mail as well, uh, which is um, sort of a, a little material that she uses for for threading elastic, which I haven't had a play with it yet. But once uh, once I've had a go, 
I'm going to be sharing Colleen's fantastic tips um, a bit a bit later, uh, you know, maybe in a few videos time. People are talking about my age again. What's going on? There we go. There. And then last one. This ought to do it, I reckon. What do you think? Uh, there. So there you go. And then you can see there is your strap there. There is if you want to do it as one long single piece like this. And then here I've done it showing you how you can do it if you want to continue doing your um, oops, your odd count stitch there. So there's that, that little bracelet piece. There's the odd count stitch just here. And then here is the, the single piece. There you go. All three different little tutorials in one. How was that? What did you think? Um, of course, I'll just show you very, very quickly about the website. As I said, the kit is on sale. So head to the little link in the description that says check out the sale and all of that. It will take you to this page just here. I'll refresh it just in case any of the kits have already sold out of stock. Hopefully not, though. Um, but yeah, here you go. You can see if you want to get this kit, you can buy it. If you scroll down a little, you can see them here. Uh, the See the necklace kit just there? Uh, £17.99. p. Uh, so very, very good value. You get loads of little bar beads in there. Um, enough to do a necklace up to 21 inches long. Um, <coughs> uh, yeah, so 21 inches long that you can make the necklace from the kit. Obviously, if you want to make it shorter, you're more than welcome to do it shorter. But it's uh, entirely up to you. Um, again, we've got all the individuals just here. So you can see there's the necklace and then there's the bracelet. In the case down here, you can have a look if you like the Aztec gold color. Um, you've got the, the necklace just here, and here is the bracelet. Uh, if you love the, the leather color, which I'll show you them all in a minute, uh, what they all actually look like, you can get them. But also, we do have the necklace pattern for sale on its own right there, and I have the bracelet pattern on sale for its own as well, which the bracelet cover, uh, the bracelet instruction also covers how to do the little beaded toggle clasp that you get included there. But then the necklace pattern will show you how to do the tapering and the clasp and the strap and most importantly how to do the little V in the center. So anyway, uh, otherwise, if you want to get some savings though, if you want discounts, the neck bracelet kits, if you want to make just the bracelets, you're a fan of bracelets, you can get any three bracelet kits for £22.50 right there. So just pick the three that you like best. If you want to make Christmas gifts for all of your family, say for example, there's one for you and you've got two daughters, you can buy three colours exactly the same and you get your discount included there. If you want to get th uh, two necklaces, again we've got a similar discount just here, about the same amount of discount, that's that one right there. Choose whichever two necklaces that you like, pick them, uh, they're right there as well. But if you want one necklace and its counterpart matching bracelet, this is the one to choose because you get both kits. You get the bracelets, you get the necklace, you get instructions for both, all the beads, everything is included for one matching set. So obviously, if you want to make matching sets, multiple matching sets though, it is cheaper if you do, you get a bigger discount on the NE2 and the NE3, but um, we do also have a discount on the matching sets as well. So whichever one you want to go for, just pick that. Um, lastly, I'll just show you while we're here. If you want to see products from all the tutorials we've doing, again, the um, the little button is there in the comments. So if you're in Facebook, um, I think the 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 uh, the description is above. If you're on YouTube, the description is below. It's this little button down here is the page that it will take you to. So view all upcoming and previous shows. If you click on that, it will take you to the place where you can find the products. For example, that B Bugle, Bell and Bauble and Star kit. If you click on this one, you can see it will take you to the page. Here's the Labyrinth products. Here's the bell products, the bell and the bauble and all of those products. Here is the Christmas brick stitch and pen wraps. You've got the woven chain down here, the twins, the Christmas wreath. We've been doing lots of Christmassy things. 
um, a poppy, loads of the different necklaces and bracelets, Halloween things, all sorts of stuff. The scarf wrong, sarong ring as well. All of these different designs, you can go through and watch all of my tutorials and you can get the projects to match. The uh, the Times Squares are very popular, for example. Right, Kaylee wants to see all the colorways. Let me show you them on the bead mat, shall I? So obviously, the um, this is the twilight color. This is what I've been demonstrating with. So that blue and that purple tone which uh, you can do it however you want, I guess, but there you go. That's the, the blue and purple tone from the Twilight. The Masquerade, which I think is absolutely stunning and looks great if you want to wear it for... Um, because it's black and white, it kind of goes with everything. That's this particular one. Let's just zoom out a tiny touch. There's the, the black and white is just here, the Masquerade color. Uh, that's this one. Uh, with a silver lined clear seed bead included in that one. You've also got the Aztec gold, which looks like this. There's that gorgeous Aztec gold color, which I think if you've got like a sort of a warm tone, skin tone, uh, more of a yellowier skin tone, uh, not so pale and white like me, then this one can look really, really lovely. It's, it's, it's probably the most popular color that we do. Um, we also have the Poseidon, which maybe if you have a, a cooler skin tone, this is the one for you. So this is probably the best one for my skin tone because it's quite blue um, tone that I have. That one, it looks absolutely gorgeous. There's also the leather tone. The uh, Sorry, the burgundy has the red and that leathery color just there. That's that one. We also have the copper mix. So you've got a mixture of all the copper colors uh, sort of in there, plus it has that really lovely sort of dark lavery reddish color almost, like a dark browny color um, seed bead included. Matches my jumper, actually. Um, and then, was that all of them? One, two, three, four, five, and then yes, Twilight is six. So I'll put them very, very quickly all into frame so that you can admire them all. Um, and then comment in and tell me which one is your favorite, because uh, Kaylee wanted to see all the colors. There's her little request just there. Which one is your favorite color? One, two, three, four, five. Oh, by the way, I'll just show you the clasp in case you didn't see it. There it is. There's that little clasp where you make, uh, you use a ripple bead button, bead, just there. My light's a bit bright, I guess. And then you make it into a little toggle, which is great if you've got metal allergies, you don't have to worry, it's all beads. Um, so there you go. And you make a little peyote ring as well. Um, where has that comment gone so I can hide it? There we go. Um, yeah, so there's the masquerade there. And then the last one, which is the twilight color, is... Ooh, no, maybe I'll put it up here then. Is that one there? So there, there you go. There's all your different colorways just there in the one shot so that you can choose whichever is your favorite. So do comment in, let me know. Um, and if you're going to get them, today is the day because that's when you get your discounts. So let's just do the, uh, the usual part of our show where we start having a look at all the things that everybody has sent in, all the different photographs that we've been receiving uh, during the stream. Uh, let's have a look here. Here we go. Um, yes. Right, now, uh, send us your pictures to live at beadspider.co.uk if you want to be on the show next week. I'm about to see what pictures people have been sending in today, um, and then I can get those all put on, ready for you to enjoy. Now, let me just find the pictures, live at beadspider.co.uk, send in your pictures, send them right now, in fact, so that you know, because they will be here for next week, and I'm going to let you just admire the um, the beautiful designs while I'm doing this. Uh, here we go. You can look at those while I'm just finding all the images that people have been sent in. Uh, the file folder wasn't quite where I wanted it to be, so I have to go searching. Uh, where are ya? Here we go. Live photos from... What's today's date? The 28th of November. So, here we go. Lots and lots of pictures so far. 
Um, let's add those in and let's start with the fun, shall we? So, Colleen Rowe has been sending us some pictures, uh, as usual, she often does. Uh, looking great there, Colleen, I love those designs. She has done for us my latest and my first poppy. So her latest designs and her poppy as well. So there on the left, that's a gorgeous pendant. I would love to know where you got such a thing as that. She's attached it with chain. There's crystals in there as well. A beautiful little necklace that she's made on the left there. And then my beaded poppy from um, a few weeks ago that she's done on that one. So great job there to Colleen. Looks fantastic. As always, it's very much appreciated. Um, Let's see, what else have we got now? Is he going to do the next image for me? Oh, computer's running a bit slow all of a sudden. Computer says no. Hopefully you can still hear me. We're going to enjoy Colleen's images slightly longer, I think, uh, while the computer decides to catch up. I don't know what it's doing right now. Uh, here we go. Um, next photo. There we go. Uh, Doris has finished uh, finished at last. My LED candles will be given away as Christmas presents. They look good and easy to make, but very fiddly to put uh, to put together. Um, thank you for sending in that picture, Doris. Your beadwork looks absolutely sublime. That is beautiful. Um, I assume that's probably peyote stitch, maybe brick stitch, but could go either way. Pretty much the same. Um, and then she stitched them all together. But those autumn tones are absolutely gorgeous. I love them. Great job there from Doris. Um, beautiful little candle design. Um, and then the strap along the bottom. I, I absolutely love it. Fantastic work, Doris. Beautiful design. Um, Oluyumi has sent us a picture again. Great. Um, thank you for sending us that one there. She said, I made these two necklaces yesterday. Wonderful. I really like the colors on that one on the right. The the sort of the whole the reds, the greens, the blues, the whole rainbow of colors there. And then that one on the left, that purple bead, the looks like probably an 8 mil, um is a lovely little bead. Um I think she's netted that beautifully and I like the little detail at the front where she's used some right angle weaves to create that sort of looping effect. So Oliumi, beautiful work there. I hope I'm saying your name right, by the way. Um, great work and uh, thank you again for sending in your pictures. Uh, she sent us more, in fact. Uh, clearly she's been playing with, uh, it seems that netting and right angle weave and mixing the two is your style. Um, that one on the right there, again, another little netted collar piece, kind of similar to our Ruth Bader Ginsburg collar that Jermaine did a tutorial on. Um, and then on the left, they look like maybe cat's eye beads or something. I can't quite tell what sort of bead that is. If you're here, I would love to know what beads that you've been using. They look fantastic. Great work to you. Um, and again, as I said, thank you for sending your pictures. Oh, and more. Wow, she's been busy. Um... Uh, yeah, little star earrings and bracelets on Wednesday. So uh, based off my little star tutorial I did, she sort of adapted it with other beads. She's made some bigger crystals in the center of it and then just used little seed beads in there uh, to make uh, that same beautiful little single star. Looks great there. I really love the, 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 the vibrance of that pale blue color, the sort of cyan. Uh, it looks great. Um, and the and the bigger crystals I think really do add to it. That's a, a nice little point actually. The 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 bigger crystals really do sort of add extra to it, and the nice little matching earrings to go with. I love it. Great work there. And then that bracelet again, the the blue and the and the sort of the purple do l go really nicely together. Again, thank you for sending us your pictures. Ah, purple penny. Um, she's been uh, she's got new kittens. The little ginger girl on the left was the one who deleted your email. Ah, yes, we sent her an email and apparently the kittens were busy climbing all over the keyboard deleting things. But there they are, very cute little kitties. Uh, I'm sure Maxine, I saw she was watching earlier. If she's still watching, she'll be sitting at home going, Oh, kitty cats, ah! Oh. She loves cats more than anything, I think. More than me, for sure. Uh, but yeah. Um, thank you for sending us your pictures, your very cute little kitties. Um, oh, there's another special photo 
um, in the file from Azra. I'll have a look at that in a second. Sharon Brown in Chipping Norton. Uh, she's clearly had a go at making my stars as well. She said she couldn't resist. They look great. You've done the puffy stars there, I see. Uh, looking really, really good. Um, clearly your tension has been done excellently because it's looking really good there. Um, pulled nicely and I'd love to see them hanging. Um, so if you're going to hang those on your tree, Sharon, I'd love to see a picture or what you end up doing with them. I want to see. Uh, great job there. Thank you for sending that in and thank you for watching my tutorial and making along with me as well. Um, I have a feeling she's here as well. Uh, yes, she is. Um, so thank you for watching and part of being part of the show every time. Uh, Stacy Bailiff, two drop peyote bracelet using triangle seed beads. I love it. So do I, Stacy. That it looks gorgeous. And that, what is that on the right? Is that like a button or something? That is so spectacular. That uh, I guess it, is that is that a button? Is that a button? I don't know. But it goes with that so perfectly and looks really fantastic. It's so like the perfect little clasp to it. It's like making your clasp into a perfect feature. But um, thank you for sharing with us your little picture. Looks fantastic. The clasp, like I said, looks amazing. Um, but yeah, the, the finished design, beautiful and done in two drop peyote, she said. Thank you for sending in that picture. Looks amazing. Uh, oh, wow, you've been busy. B clearly, you've got all the fantastic buttons. I want to know where you're getting these these amazing buttons from. I want to get some too. Uh, she's been making, it looks like, tile beads or maybe super duos possibly uh, with twins through the center. Looks really good. Um, and then a little edging of seed beads as well and then turn that into a cuff. Again, looks absolutely spectacular. Gorgeous work there. Um, a beautiful little design. Thank you for sharing it with us. Uh, I love it. Wonderful color choices again as well. Um, the Picasso Twids, I think, are my favorite. Um, Sue Devney. I've been making these from the tutorials on the website. Everyone loves them. Yes, this is another one of our um, little tutorials. It's a free pattern, maybe? or I can't remember. But they definitely come in one of our kits uh, where you make those little German drops, they're called. Um, a German icicle drop. Uh, looks beautiful there. You've done them fantastically. The, cr the I think the the clear crystal looks beautiful there, and you've done them superbly. Excellent workmanship. Much neater than the ones I've made. I tell you that. That's for sure. Wire and I, as we found out this week, are not friends, and neither are monofilament and I. Um, thank you for sending in your pictures, Sue. And I'd love to know what you intend to do with them. Are they going to go on the tree? Are you going to hang them elsewhere? Will you be, I don't know, using them as napkin holders? I've heard people will do that too. Um, let us know. We're back to Colleen's. So now I need to find... <coughs> there's a photo somewhere. I'll put my face on, I guess, while I try and find it. There's a photo. Um, we were sent in a, uh, a recipe... Azra Sharif, who is a regular watcher and has been part of our, almost part of the family she's been around that long, um, that she sent us in some, here they go, beautiful, I hope I, I hope I got all the pictures, I'll just check that I got them all, um, but yes, here we are, uh, Jermaine, she sent us in a recipe, how to make these beautiful, uh, delicious, 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 um, potato, I guess, kind of like um, chips, vaguely, maybe, but more of a, a Pakistani, Sri Lankan, I can't remember. I was told in advance, but I can't remember now, um, a different recipe, but uh, Jermaine made those the other night, and we took lots and lots of pictures based off of pota potato pakoras, that's what they are. Um, good. I'm glad I'm watching the comments coming in because Jermaine has been watching. Uh, potato pakoras that she made, uh, that she sent us the recipe for, and apparently they were absolutely delicious. Really, really Moorish. Couldn't get enough. I, unfortunately, they were so tasty that I didn't even get to have any because they were all eaten before I, um... Before I, I came over, mum and dad had scoffed the lot. They were that tasty. But yeah, uh, so thank you to Azra for sending us the recipe. Anyone else who's got a recipe they want to send us, uh, feel free to send it and we'll try it out and take pictures. 
um, Pakistani, Pakistani pakoras, those were. Um, but yes, so as always, let's just oomph the brightness a little so we can actually see me. It's getting dark outside now. Um, thank you everybody for sending in your pictures. As usual, uh, every Saturday I want to try and do that. So if you send your pictures, I'll just show it one last time, get featured live at beadspider.co.uk to send in your pictures and you can be part of that little um, segment, I suppose, that we did just a minute ago, showing off everybody's hard work and what they've been doing and, and their pets as well and everything. Um, but yeah, so make sure you get in and get your Labyrinth bracelets. The necklace looks absolutely stunning on. Do you know what? There's a photograph. I didn't find it. Do you know what? I'll show you a picture real quickly. This is what I did last Saturday. So you can have a look at that just briefly while I... Uh, look for the photo that I'm after. Where is it now? I'm going to show you what uh, the finished necklace actually looks like when it's on. I know I've got the photo somewhere. Um, but yeah, do you like my cute little brick stitch things? Um, come on now. Here we go. I'm, I'm going as fast as I can trying to find this image because I want to show you the finished necklace. Because when it's on, that V shape of it really, really does look ultra effective. It's just absolutely beautiful, if I say so myself, having designed it myself. <laughs> Bigging myself up a bit there, maybe. Um, you know, maybe I should have more modesty. Uh, let's see if I can find it here. Labyrinth necklace. Yes. Open this. And here they are. One and one. Pop them on here. And hopefully this will fit nicely. Okay, so uh, here's the next image. There's the, see that beautiful V shape? You can see the tapering as well uh, at the neck between the, the, the main segment and the strap. Uh, looks really, that took me a long time to figure out. The, 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 I, I spent a long time figuring out, I did about four different variations of the tapering and, and the square in the center to get the V shape. Um, I spent a lot of time working out the, the ultimate ideal thread path as well. Um, so yeah, that is what it looks like. That's the copper mix colorway, which is gorgeous, obviously. And then there's the masquerade and you can see it does sit really beautifully and, um, if I say so myself. Uh, but yeah, if you have, um, uh, if you're wanting to get that one, don't waste too much time. I've already seen lots of orders are coming in. Um, people are very busy and I think the website has a lot of people on it right now as well. So if you're going to get the, the kit, be quick about it because uh, I think we're getting low in stock on possibly two of the uh, the, the things already. Uh, math. But yeah, so make sure you go on. If you're going to buy that, getting the pattern, whatever it is, if you're getting a kit, be quick. They're going very, very quickly. Uh, they might not last too long. Hopefully we'll be able to restock them before Christmas if they start to sell out. But jump on and get them very, very quickly. Um, let's see. There is... Uh... Ah, Kaylee's just said... Very talented to make those. I don't think I could do it. Yes, you can. I've tried to do it so that the instructions are really, really easy. So I would be, uh, I would, I, I, I'm, I'd be, I'm, I'm confident in your skills, Kaylee. I'm sure you'll be able to do it. Um, but yeah, um, thank you guys for watching. I will be back next uh, week. Uh, I've just been asked, what am I making next Wednesday? Do you know, I, I. I uh, I do know this, but when I'm, uh, I'm I'm too focused on what I'm having to do this week to to remember what's coming. Oh yeah, Dana says don't forget to hit the like button and the share button and all of those other buttons. Um, please do like, share, subscribe, all of those sorts of things. Um, it would be very much appreciated. Um, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed today's tutorial as usual. I will see you next Wednesday for. What is it that we're doing on Wednesday?
I can't remember. I can't remember. But you'll find out on Monday, I guess. If you want to find out, make sure you sign up to our newsletter because we send out an email either Monday or Tuesday. That's the easiest way to find out what's coming soonest. So please do um, sign up to our little uh, newsletter, like this video, share this video. Have a lovely weekend. I'm off to watch some Formula One qualifying and some football and spend some quality time with Maxine. Thank you for joining me and I will see you all on Wednesday. Um, thanks for joining and goodbye. Bye-bye.